So when we were in Utah, Chris and Miriam introduced us to this phenomenal burger from Apollo Burger called the Utah Burger. And one of the ingredients was gyro meat or gyro meat as some people call it. Problem is a lot of the store-bought gyro meat, it has weed in it. So Joe said to me, we either got to figure this out or we're going to have to move to Utah. Yeah. So today we're going to make our own gyro meat. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to So it. we're finally going to be able to get the Utah burger right here in South Florida. Because the kids are not ready to move just yet, <laughs> and I don't think that Joe can handle it if we can't bring it to South Florida right now. Now we have looked in a lot of different stores and I finally found in Sam's Club some pre-packaged gyro meat and then when I looked at the ingredients it was like seven carbs per serving and the second ingredient was wheat because basically what a gyro is it's a Mediterranean meatloaf. Right. So even aside from the Utah burger I actually have always loved gyros. I mean we can't have pita bread on you know, keto, but we can have the meat and the lettuce and the tomatoes and the onion, and don't forget about the tzatziki sauce. I was gonna say, the cucumber sauce is where it's at. And yeah, once we looked at all the ingredients, we thought we can do this keto mm -hmm. style, no problem. Yep, so today we're gonna make our own gyro, and this actually is probably one of the easiest recipes we ever make. Wait a second, how easy is it? It is so easy that even Rachel could make it. Yay! Now, one thing I am going to say, this is basically a meatloaf. Usually when we make hamburgers or meatloaf, I tell you don't handle the meat too much, right? We don't want it to get like tough. Today, we wanna handle the meat a lot. We okay. wanna break down that protein and help it to bind with the water and the fat that's in the meat. So the only proper way to do this, because if you think about it, when you go get a gyro, they've got that thing on a spit, right? Right. And it's very tough. They, they're able to slice it off. Well, you can't do that with a regular meatloaf when you no. don't handle the meat right, right? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is you really are going to need either a KitchenAid stand-up mixer or a beater or preferably a food processor because that's going to really break down that meat. It's going to let the proteins out. It's going to get everything to bind because you want this nice and sticky when you're done. That sounds <laughs> terrible, but it's true. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go over the ingredients because you really don't need a lot. We'll start off with the spices. First thing we're going to need is some cumin. We're gonna need some rosemary. Yum. We're gonna need some garlic. You can Ooh. either use minced garlic like we do, or you can use cloves. We tend to not buy cloves because they go bad. I like buying it that way. You just kind of scoop it out. Time. It lasts a lot longer. Some black pepper. You need some thyme. Got some thyme for me? We need some oregano. Now here's the one ingredient that if you can find it, it's a great ingredient to have, but if you can't, we're just gonna substitute with a little extra oregano. And guess what? Not one store by us have it. What? And that is marjoram. Okay. okay. So very difficult to find, but here's the cool thing is oregano has a very similar flavor profile. So what we're gonna do is instead of using a teaspoon of marjoram, like we would have if you can find it, use an extra half a teaspoon of oregano, but I we'll talk that. about that when we get to it. Okay. okay. Last thing we need is of course some salt. Last but not least. So that's all the spices. After that, we need about a quarter to a half an onion. We kind of cut down on onion because onion is kind of carby. Also, it kind of stinks up the entire house. I was gonna say, we used to use so much onion that now I'm super sensitive to it. Yep, and then here's what you need. You're gonna need a pound of ground beef. We've got 90, 10 there. And then we need a pound of lamb because mm. gyro meat, right? <laughs> lamb. Yep. That's all we need. You ready to get started? Ready. Let's put it all to the side. Okay. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our food processor. You're in charge here. All right. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our onion, go ahead and dump your onion in there. We're gonna put our top back on. And then we're gonna go ahead and chop them up. You wanna get them nice and fine. Now you could hand chop them if you want, but why? You, you really want to get them nice and fine because this is gonna be in the whole mixture. I don't wanna cry if I don't have to. It helps if you plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you're good. Now, if you want to, but this is kind of like an optional step, I'm finding you don't really need to do this. You could take them out and squeeze them through like some paper towels to get any moisture out of there. But because I'm only using about a quarter of a cup of onion or a quarter of an onion, there's not a whole lot of moisture in there. But if you're gonna use a lot of onion, like an entire onion, I highly advise take it out, put it in some like paper towels and squeeze some of that extra moisture out because it's going to help it bind better because we aren't using any breadcrumbs or wheat or anything like that as a binding agent. Okay, to that, we're going to add our spices. And this is very simple. First, we're going to start off with the garlic. You're looking at like three to five cloves of garlic or a tablespoon of the minced garlic. So that's what we're using, one tablespoon of the minced garlic. After that, very simple, a teaspoon of everything. Okay. So we're gonna start off with a teaspoon of oregano. Now, again, we don't have any marjoram, so I have one and a half teaspoons in there. So if you have marjoram, it's a teaspoon of oregano and a teaspoon of marjoram. If you don't, one and a half teaspoons of oregano. We've got a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of rosemary, a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of thyme, a teaspoon of salt. Ooh, That's yum. all of our spices. Let me make sure I get all the salt. To that, we're going to add, of course we've got like the knife that doesn't cut anything. Right, a butter knife that looks like a steak knife. Right. Anybody have those? Okay, so we got one pound of ground lamb. And then we've got a pound of ground beef. And this is uh, this is 90-10 ground beef. Got it from Whole Foods because it was on sale for $3.25 a pound. You never think you're going to get a sale at Whole Foods until you get a sale at Whole Foods. Yes. Yeah, Whole Foods has great sales. Just shop for the yellow things. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get an additional 10% off anything that's on sale. So we're going to go ahead and close that back up. And we're going to go ahead and get it going. Okay, so what you're probably gonna have to do, depending on your food processor, is come back in, use a little spatula, and kind of push it around, because you really, you can see how it's starting to get, we'll go ahead and put this directly under the center camera. You can see how it's starting to get a little sticky. You wanna get all of that protein to start like binding with everything else. So go ahead and let's let it run a little bit longer. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so now we'll get in. We're gonna just take this, we'll push this off to the side. Now, again, you can look at this and you can see how sticky it is. See how it's like, it's, it's like, it's like gross. a slime, right? Yes, yeah. it's, it's very gross because you got all the fat in there. Mixed until disgusting. <laughs> that's the policy. And again, normally you wouldn't want to do this because it would toughen up the meat, but here you want to toughen it up a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a meatloaf pan. This is my favorite meatloaf pan. Rachel bought this for me on QVC. I'm gonna leave a link for it down below. This is the Rachel Ray meatloaf pan. And what's cool about it is, it's got this little tray in here. Hello. So when you're done, you can simply lift it up and it, it first of all gets the meatloaf right out. But if you were trying to get rid of extra grease or water, it leaves it in here. Left so in there. super easy to clean. I love this thing. If you don't have this, here's what you're gonna do. If you don't even have a meatloaf pan, no problem. Get some tin foil. You're gonna put it in there, kind of form a loaf. The key is you gotta get this nice and packed. So go ahead and dump this in here. You wanna make sure there's no air bubbles and you wanna really press it down hard. Once, you, once you're ready, I'll get the blade out of there so that you don't cut your finger. Okay, thank you. Here, I'll hold this. It is sticky. Like it does not want to come out of this bowl. Let me hold it. Okay. 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 
to now take your spatula and what you want to do is kind of spread this around and press down. You want to get it really pressed down hard. Press down, shaking together, but not rolling over. Not rolling over. So you want to get all of the air bubbles out. Ugh. 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 The and noise <laughs> makes it really helpful. <laughs> like you have to have the noises. So that's what we got, just like that. And again, look, look how cool this pan is. Because we could just kind of lift it up like that. And you can see, oh look, no air bubbles in there. That's crazy. Okay, I actually did see one little air bubble, so we're gonna just give it a little press on that side. You didn't do the noises, do the noise, it makes it helpful. Oh, okay. Yeah. One more with the noise. Ugh. There you go. Ugh. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's cooking. Are you good? That's okay. what it sounds like. 325 degrees for about 40 minutes. We're looking for an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Okay, magic of television. We already have one made. Right. Made it this morning. So basically you have a meatloaf, right? It's a Greek meatloaf. It's lamb and beef. Who can complain about that? And best part is this is pretty much one to one. So if you eat a quarter of this, so basically you're gonna eat a half a pound of meat. Hello. You're looking at only about 500 calories and it's like 40 grams of protein, 40 grams of fat. So absolutely perfect. Here's what we're gonna do. You gotta slice it. Why? Because gyro meat should be sliced thin. It should. Right? So we're going to go ahead and take this here. We're going to go ahead and slice this up. Don't worry, my hands are clean. I checked. Make Look sure. at that. That is beautiful. So it's not on a spit. It's not on a spit. But that's okay. We're achieving the same effect. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a taste test here. Mm, I'm already... Kind of doing a taste test with a little crumble on the side. Okay. You got a fork? Mm-hmm. You gonna taste it? I am. Ooh, but I got tzatziki I got, sauce. I got homemade tzatziki sauce. Link for the recipe is down below. It's on our website. We haven't done a video on it yet, but it's delicious. Believe me, it's delicious. Look at all those fresh cucumbers. I actually add a little bit of dill to mine because I love dill. Yes, we do. Okay, look at that. Okay. That looks so good. Here we go. Dink it, dink it, dink it. I almost forgot. That's yeah, right. Mmm. Mm. So good. Or good. Really good. I don't know what's better, the gyro or the tzatziki. They work so well together. Mmm. Now, when you think about the Utah burger, you had the hamburger, you had pastrami, which you can get it from the store easily. Yep. You have this. There was a sauce on the burger, That's but right. this is such a better option yep. keto wise. Because basically, our tzatziki sauce is yogurt. Yep. We put a little bit of olive oil in there. It's delicious. A couple of spices. Mm hmm. Cucumber and vinegar. Crazy good. Mmm. Okay. So, one little thing. If you want to have this really tight, like really, really packed hard, what you can do is after this is cooked, you can actually like put it back in your pan. You wrap it up and you can put weights on that and it's going to really smush it together more. I'm not that patient. Like we're just going to eat it just like this. Yeah, I think it's, it's perfect. pretty packed in there well. But I'm excited about this. We're going to eat some gyros for dinner. I was going to make hamburgers and I'm like, why don't we just eat gyros? Because we have this one and now there's another one in the oven. So... We can each have an entire loaf of gyro meat. Super delicious. And we don't have pitas, but we do have like egg like wraps. Yep. So what you would use to make a taco, yep. this would work great too. You can even go make the Keto Connect recipe for the non bread. That would work mm -hmm. really well with that. Delicious. So, well, that is going to be today's video. Let us know down in the comment section if you like gyro meat or gyro meat. I don't know. Everybody pronounces it differently. I, I just kind of was raised. It's gyro meat. Yeah, but me too. Also, do you like tzatziki sauce or what kind of sauce do you like when you have lamb and other types of meats like this? Now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over there. Well, whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we have a new recipe, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.